Hello everyone, welcome to This Day. It is Friday, October 6th. I'm Michael Taylor. Welcome to the program. We've got a great one and it's action packed. Let's get right to it. On the show today, we have amazing hearing. We have Anne Mandel Noel and we have Gabriela Rodriguez coming on to talk about some hearing issues, what you can do to make sure you are all fit for hearing. Sports Corner with Cole Young and the Publishing Club coming up, talking about a couple events they have coming up. Should be fun, and please uh, watch it. Stay informed. That's coming up right now. Uh, you guys can get free COVID tests. Uh, UPS, the United Postal Service, is putting them out again. And so all you have to do is go to the website. I actually did it the other day. Super easy. They'll send you four to your house, so they should be on their way. Uh, limit one, uh, one order per resident, but you get the four that come to your house. Super easy. One page. Fill out your address. Fill out your name, and they come to your house. And just check those expiration dates. They actually extended those expiration dates, so the ones on the package aren't actually the ones uh, that expire. It actually goes a little longer. Let's take a look outside at our weather. Uh, I got one word for you, hot. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot weekend, air conditioning. If you're going out, make sure you stay hydrated, stay cool, do your best, and uh, make sure you find the shade. It's going to be warm. Let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset. We have a great picture from Mark Rabinowitz, a uh, guy out there with his pet squirrel enjoying <laughs> the beach. Looks like he's over in Dana Point over at the jetty or something like that. Sunrise this morning was 648. Sunset tonight is going to be 6. 30. And if you'd like to send us a picture, you can do that. Send us your picture of your pet squirrel, your pet cat, your pet dog, or just some sort of nice picture in the area. Make sure you have your name on there, where you took it, and make sure it's horizontal. You can send it to Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. Okay, let's take a look at our meetings. We've got one for you. Who doesn't want to go to a Friday meeting? But when we come back, we'll be talking to folks from Amazing Hearing. Stay with us. Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials, at 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. Hi, welcome to Pacific Financial Planners. We focus on income replacement for your retirement. We have over three decades of professional money management experience. We personalize a plan that's right for you and your family. You only get one shot at retirement. Don't you think you better get it right? So give us a call for your free consultation. We can do this over the phone, via Zoom, or in person. Hi, I'm Ann Mundell Noel, audiologist and owner at Amazing Hearing. We are so excited. We have been voted number one place to buy a hearing aid in Orange County, and it's all thanks to you, our patients, colleagues, friends, family. Thank you so much for placing your trust in us for your hearing needs. Give us a call at 949-667-9818. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the program. We're, we're already starting our conversation over here with uh, amazing folks from Amazing Hearing. So I want to introduce Ann Mandel Noel and Gabriella Rodriguez to the program. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so my first time getting to talk to you, but you guys have been long time, long time guests here on the program. And you also had a, some recent uh, awards that we want to talk about. You guys had some honors from the Orange County Register, right? We did. We are very thankful and blessed that we have been voted the number one place to buy a hearing aid in Orange County. <laughs> Back to back, so two <laughs> years right. in a row. That's right. That's and uh, right. we say we have very intelligent patients. Uh -huh. <laughs> now tell us a little bit about like what how what went into that. How did you find out that you had this kind of cool award? So with that, um, the patients vote. So oh, okay. we get that's a link. Um, that we can send out and then they vote. So they got to vote once a day, every day for 30 days back in like May. Okay. And then once they co um, correlated all the results, then we found out in September 
mm -hmm. that we won, and we announced it at the end of September. Oh, well, terrific. Congratulations on that. Yeah, That's it's a big award. Yeah. So what do you think makes you guys, I don't know, a little bit different or a little bit, what, what is it about your, your patients that come away saying this, this is the place to go, we love the server, we love what's going on? Well, I think the biggest thing is that we are more like a boutique. So okay. we are really into patient-centered care. And as audiologists, that means that we have a master's degree or Dr. Gabby has a doctorate degree in hearing sciences. So we have a little bit more of the education behind us as well as the experience and the empathy. So our team is really a hands-on, patient-centered. We have evening hours, we have Saturday okay. hours. So it's about the whole kind of package put together. Okay. Now what makes the, the, the hearing, I guess, let's talk, Dr. Gabby, a quick question, kind of easy, I don't know if it's easier, kind of, what makes hearing like kind of a, almost a, a, an entire body kind of experience, or it kind of affects yeah. everything, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Hearing care is health care. And so what a lot of people don't realize is that your inner ear is so intricate. There's so many things involved in the inner ear aside from hearing. Mm -hmm. So your balance organ is in the inner ear, responsible for kind of where you are in time and place. Mm -hmm. Really important. Make sure we're not fall risk. Um, another thing going along with fall risk is safety. Got to make sure you're safe, you know, stable. Um, that includes the whole body, especially the inner ear. Um, we know that memory is closely related to the inner ear. Uh, okay. Any degree of hearing loss puts you more risk for overall cognitive decline. Alzheimer's, dementia, closely related to hearing, untreated hearing loss. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as audiologists, we kind of look at the whole puzzle pe pieces put them all together to make sure you're safe and mm -hmm. healthy and happy. Socialization, isolation, withdrawing from conversations and social gatherings, mm -hmm. all we know are signs of maybe an untreated hearing loss, mm -hmm. and that plays mm -hmm. into your overall health as well. Mm -hmm. How does, it's kind of interesting to me, I guess, you know, when you, you spin around, you get dizzy, that's an inner ear issue. Or when, yeah. you, when you get a little bit older, you have the thinning of, of the inner ear and you can't do roller coasters because you nausea. Yeah. Well, how is that and why? Do we know why that's all connected to the ear? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, but. Yeah, so there's three <laughs> little bones inside your inner ear that are responsible for exactly where you are in time and space. Just like your eyes, you know, as mm -hmm. you get older, things start to break down as you get a little wiser. Um, same thing with, with your inner ear. The same nerve that controls your balance organ controls your hearing organ. So okay. when we see a deficit in one, oftentimes we see a deficit in the other. I don't know if I'm getting any wiser, but I'm getting older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do we test and treat for these issues if we start seeing some of these things coming up? First place would be come see an audiologist. We're able to scratch the surface on a lot of different things make appropriate medical referrals if needed. Mm -hmm. um, and in the office, we can really you know, go over results, diagnosis, and guide you what the next steps would be. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when, we, when we go to the office, when we're doing those kinds of things, um, are we doing like the hearing test where we're raising the hands? Or is, <laughs> what, what, what's the process of that for people who might be nervous about going yeah. to a doctor or that? Because yeah. you know, it's not a regular year annual thing for most people to go to an audiologist. Right. I think my last one literally was when I was a kid in high school and we we're doing the raise your hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People always ask if anything has changed and honestly, we haven't really fixed what's not broken. Okay. So it's a little bit more <laughs> intense than just raising your hand, but we do listen to beeps, click a button, we go through some speech recognition, test you in background noise, see you know what issues might arise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and I would like to add to that that we know that we are losing our vision in our 40s and 50s, and we are now losing our hearing in our 60s and 70s, okay. and that's starting to become more of a well-known fact, and so it is a good thing to get a screening even a baseline when you're in your 60s or even right. before if you notice that you're leaning in, if you're having trouble in background noise because although people will say, well, I have a little bit of loss, anything outside the normal zone is not normal, right? right. Our brain is to, made to have a full input and if we don't get that, then we're gonna start to struggle. Yeah. And it can be so slight and incremental that people mm -hmm. just think, oh, this is the way I've always heard, you know, that little slow, kind of slow boil that happens in, as you get older. Um, you know, today we have the ability to go into Costco and buy a hearing aid. Mm -hmm. And it just seems to me that you'd want an expert to be able to do that kind of thing. I mean, what's, what's the difference between going into, why can't I just go off and buy something at Costco and I'm, I should be fine? <laughs> well, I think Costco is a safe place because it's a well-known name, right? Sure. I know that there's a Costco across the country, so I know that they're stable. 
the, what Costco's business model, though, is a moderate product at a moderate price. Mm -hmm. And moderate is OK for some people. But we know that we are trying to give the best quality products. So you'll never find the hearing aids that we offer in our office in Costco. Right. Because that's not their business model. The kind of the generics. Exactly. <laughs> or just the moderate, right? right? So they still are well-known manufacturers. But we are always to say, what is the best? Because if we can give the brain the cleanest, clearest signal for processing, then we know you have your best chance of success. And right. we, have a, um, we have Costco pricing at um, a, a better quality product. Right. So okay. we feel that, especially as doctors of audiology, and I have a master's degree, that we are the one to start with. And then if they choose to want to go somewhere else, that's great. Mm -hmm. But truly, when people say, well, I'm happy with what I have, it's because maybe you haven't listened to something else. Right, right. So. And there can be variations, right? If I have tinnitus along with maybe damage in one ear, there's going to be, there's going to be something that the Costco folks aren't mm -hmm. able to, you know, that's just the guy <laughs> that's stocking the shelf isn't going to be able to right. tell you much. But sure. going to you, you'll be able to kind of fine tune that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And tinnitus or tinnitus, both is correct, oh. uh, can be can be one of the first signs of, of hearing loss. So mm -hmm. a lot of times if you see a medical doctor, they might tell you <clears throat> there's not a whole lot we can do about mm -hmm. that. I would say get a hearing test because that does open up a treatment option. So yeah. Okay. What are the best ways we can protect our hearing as we get older, or as, as we go along in our lives? I would say exercise, right? So <coughs> the three things that we know we should be doing. One, exercise because you get oxygen into the body and the ear is the size of a pea. So the organ that does the hearing is the size of a pea. So the blood flow going in and out of it is crucial. And so oxygen is number one. The second thing is eating healthy, right? So we know that the more we eat well, the better the blood flow. And then the third thing is protect it when you have noise and you're in loud environments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for younger people, definitely protecting it. Okay, yeah. And you know, um, with the kids, I know the kids today, these kids today, <laughs> but you know, they're, they're walking around with the earbuds and I can hear mm -hmm. them through that. I mean, are, are we doing long-term damage or, you know, is that just this, mm -hmm. is, is, that, is that a real, gonna be a real issue down the line in the next decades to come? It can be for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm choking. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the thing with hearing is once you lose it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So. That people don't realize that years ago, the concerts, the music, the all of the input does try, stay with you through your whole life. Okay. So you can. So <clears throat> baseline audiograms, making sure you're being diligent early on, best way. Yeah, in fact, even the recent studies are showing that the 18-year-olds are more like 45 and 50-year-olds when it comes to hearing levels. Wow. So what happens is when you have a noise-induced loss, like what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you go and your hearing is normal, normal, normal. There's a drop and it recovers and then normal, normal, normal. So we can track if there's a noise-induced hearing loss. Okay. But what happens then is with aging, you hit that area that starts to decay and then it finds that part that was damaged way before and so it's worse than if you didn't have a noise induced okay. loss. Wow. So yeah. definitely things we can look at and getting a baseline is the best way to start. Now you guys aren't just about hearing, you're also kind of like on the environmental side. You guys do some recycling. Do you still do that at, the, at your, at your uh, shop there? Yeah. We do. Yeah, yeah. we do. You go? Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we collect plastic bottles and aluminum cans and anything with the California CRV. So we don't do recycling like milk bottles and uh, we'll laundry. Take my old TV. Yeah, <laughs> none of that. But what we do do with the, ca the uh, money that's collected from that is we use it to put water wells in Uganda. And over the last 14 years that I've been recycling, we have put in 12 water wells. Oh, that's so we know directly where they're going because we have those um, connections and so it's life changing. So anybody can drop off plastic bottles and aluminum cans. You don't need to be a patient. And we take them um, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Well, that's fantastic. Let's, let's yeah. close on that. Dr. Gabby and Ann, that were amazing here. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. You. We appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And we have a Sports Corner up next with Cole Young. Stay with us.
Welcome back to this week's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, and we are officially 80 episodes in. To kick off this 80th episode, here is the NFL Week 4 recap and the Week 5 preview. We had some thrilling games in the morning slate, like the Broncos' comeback against the Bears. Denver was down 28-7 at the start of the third quarter, and it looked like the Bears were beginning to run away with the win. After two offensive and one defensive touchdowns, the Broncos were all tied with less than two minutes remaining in the game, and kicker Will Lutz drove home a 51-yard field goal to secure the Broncos' first win of the season. The Rams had a back-and-forth battle with the Colts, and eventually won on a Puka Nakua touchdown in overtime. The Eagles and Commanders rivalry was reignited with that game going to overtime as well, and the Eagles remain undefeated after a game-winning field goal. Aside from the close games, there were a few surprising blowouts, like the Cowboys' 38-3 win over the Patriots, the Seahawks' 21-point and 10-sack victory over the Giants, and the Bills' dominant 48-20 win over the Dolphins, as well as the Titans beating the Bengals by 24, and lastly, of course, the Jaguars' win over the Falcons in the Toy Story broadcast game. After Week 4, there are just two undefeated teams remaining, the 49ers and the Eagles. And there are two teams still without a win, the Panthers and the Bears. Time for my picks for Week 5. I finally got my first 4-0 week last week, bringing me to 12-4 overall. For this week, I'm taking the Commanders over the Bears, the Bills over the Jaguars in London, the Ravens to come out on top of their division rival Steelers, and the Packers to pick up a win in Vegas. It truly is the best time of year, especially because starting on Wednesday this week, there are 50 straight days of football between the college and NFL games. There are two decent games tonight, with Kansas State heading to Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State, and Nebraska and Illinois squaring off. But the best game of the weekend and possibly the biggest game of the season so far will be tomorrow morning with a Red River Showdown. This heated rivalry game between Oklahoma and Texas has been played every year since 1900, and this year is shaping up to be one of the best. Texas currently leads this series with 63 wins to Oklahoma's 50. Texas dominated this game last year, beating the Sooners 49-0. The Longhorns enter this game as the number three team in the nation, with Oklahoma being ranked 12 and looking to avenge last year's loss and pick up a win on the road. The Red River Showdown kicks off tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. on ABC, and you do not want to miss this one. Speaking of games you won't want to miss, the MLB playoffs have officially begun. Here's a look at the bracket so far. The Rangers, Diamondbacks, and Phillies all picked up their first wins on Wednesday, as well as the Twins, who won their first playoff game since 2004. Game two for all of these matchups were on Wednesday, and on just the second day of the Wild Card Week, all four series were decided. The Texas Rangers kicked off the day by eliminating the Tampa Bay Rays with a dominant 7-1 win, and the Minnesota Twins won their first playoff series since 2002 by sweeping the Toronto Blue Jays. The Arizona Diamondbacks knocked off the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Philadelphia Phillies dominated the Miami Marlins at home. The teams that move on will start the division series on Saturday. Texas will kick off the weekend with Game 1 in Baltimore, followed by the Twins heading to Houston to take on the Astros, the Phillies heading to Atlanta to face off with the powerhouse Braves, and to close the day, the Arizona Diamondbacks will travel to the West Coast to start their series with the Dodgers. The NHL preseason is also being played, with a ton of games over the weekend and the official season starting on Tuesday the 10th. So, there is tons and tons of football, playoff baseball, and hockey to enjoy this weekend, plus so much more. Be sure to tune in to Sports Corner next Friday and every Friday to get all the latest news and updates. I'm Cole Young. Thanks for tuning in for 80 episodes, and have a great weekend. talking I both guests we already talk we already, we already having a big conversation you guys are missing it we're at the publishing club here and we want to welcome Scott Galasso and Sunshine Luti to the program thanks for joining Thank us you. so tell us a little bit about the publishing club for folks who don't know Sunshine you want to start or yes please no. <laughs> oh, Go ahead. well <laughs> okay um, what we're here about is the upcoming author form Oh, sure. And this is going to be the third one. We've had two of them. We actually had two of them in 2022. Yeah. And um, the first one, I think we had 18 authors. And the second one, we had 
um, 24, and this year we have 29. Okay. 29 different authors. It's going to be, um, authors are going to be there with their tables, mm -hmm. so people can come in and talk to them, okay. learn their stories, maybe even buy a book as a gift for <laughs> someone or buy one for themselves. So the club's really about people who are interested in authors and publishing or maybe have some ideas about publishing themselves, really, right? Is that kind of look yeah. who, you're, who you look in terms of yes. who joins the club? Yeah, it's, it's both... Uh, there's a lot of people who never wrote, but who always wanted to, and it gives them a place to kind of get all the basic information they'll need. Mm -hmm. And then there are others of us who have been writing since you know we were kids, uh, but you want to have a place to go where people can understand your passion yeah. for what you're doing, and uh, and we can all learn from each, from each other. So that's another that's another important reason why we get together. And the forum that you have coming up, the author forum is, is coming up. Uh, tell us a little bit about that one. Who's going to be there? What are we going to What are we going to have? We got the we got the flyer up on the screen, I think, for yep. the autumn author forum. So. Right. So, like I was saying, we have the twenty nine authors, and it's all different kind of mm -hmm. venues. Mm -hmm. um, people doing autobiographies, people doing fictional stories, people doing more serious things, people yeah. doing poetry. Memoirs, fiction, science fiction. I, I, in my case, I write poetry. Okay. But the, the point is that the publishing club welcomes people no matter what genre they're writing in. Right, right. Because what, what do you guys get out of it? When you, when you, what are your memberships and those guys? What do, you, what do you come away with it? Is it a kind of a variety of things? Information and kind of open? Information, because yeah. we have wonderful speakers. Uh, if you haven't yet managed to put your words out on paper, there, we have people that come in and talk to people about doing some writing mm -hmm. and actually sometimes doing a writing class. Right. Uh, we have people coming in talking about different kinds of publishing. Uh, mm -hmm. I put a document together because I learned how to do the self-publishing and I put a document together that's out there on our website that leads people through the process and so they can do it themselves. Right, right. And that's a great outlet for people, I think, you know, that, that self-publishing, I think it was frowned upon in the early days of, of publishing that kind of thing. But I think there's a... Everybody it, does it now. Everybody does it now, right? And it's kind of this outlet. It's like, hey, I, I created something and I want to put it out there yeah. for whoever might want it, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And I did something similar. I've been writing for such a long time and have tried the uh, Vanity Press way, self-published. I use Kindle now, but I have my own team that I work with. Um, and so I just put, I put a, on our website uh, a little paper called Many Paths to the Way, which says these are the different ways you can go about this to publish, mm -hmm. to help people who don't have that background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when they, they can get some information from that that works for them, then I feel like I've contributed. So it's it's paying it forward a bit. Okay. Um, you, you guys have, the format of the event has changed. Uh, so Scott will t talk a little bit about that and, and how things are how things are playing out for the uh, for the upcoming events. Okay. Well, when we first we first did this, we gave everybody a certain amount of time to introduce their books. Uh, uh, there was the problem with that was that some people would spend so much time on the introduction, they never got talking to their book until much later. And then we had some people at the end trying to get their two minutes in. So we decided to have sort of a round robin thing where people could go to each table and talk to every person they were interested in okay. about their work. So it's it's one on one that way. Yeah. And they would bring friends and other uh, people who are interested in publishing. Some joined the club as a result of that. So we continue with the, continue to build on that, and that's been really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then also myself, I, I found some authors there that were here in the, in the village that I didn't know about, and I've read their stuff, and I'm going, I'm really glad I got to meet them. Mm -hmm. So the forum presents an opportunity to sell, an opportunity to meet writers, an opportunity to ask questions, and an opportunity to have the, uh, the club itself grow. Mm -hmm. And learn about their experiences because, right. you know, it's, it's a process. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, you, and you both are published authors, but is it, is, it a, is it still kind of a joy to meet new people and meet other authors and kind of like expand that universe for yourselves? Absolutely. It yeah. is. It's an opportunity <clears throat> to do that because even uh, at the forum, though, um, I'm going to be talking to the other people there. And yeah learning about their experience, because it's not the same as mine. Mm -hmm. Right, a little bit, <laughs> little bit different, a little bit, everybody takes it from a different kind of approach, right? Right, right, right. but we're all learning from each other, and that's, that's one of the essential things that's really 
helpful. And then, you know, the more people you talk to, the more chance you actually have to sell a book. <laughs> because if they get interested in what you have to say, they'll say, well, I want to you know, explore this, this a little book. more deeply. <laughs> and, it, and that's helpful. And it's networking, too. Mm -hmm. And that's part of any type of marketing. So give me that final pitch on why people should come out to this event. <laughs> how, why should people give me give me the time, give me the dates? How can people get all, how can people get in there? Okay, well, first of all, it's going to be Wednesday, October eighteenth. It's there going to be go. from two to four. It's going to be in the pack in dining room two, and they come to the door. And when they get there, there'll be a table there. They, if they sign up for membership now, they get the rest of the year free mm -hmm. plus next year. And when they do that. They get to have a copy of the this year's book, the Twin, Village Stories 2023. Mm -hmm. um, they also get a card, and they are to take this card. It has every table on the card, and they take it around to the sponsors and to the community partners and to the authors and get signatures. Yep. And on the way out, they turn the card in, and they might get a prize. Okay. Hold up that book. What was that book there? Well, this one we'll is my latest, <laughs> my latest published one. I just got it out last week. It's <laughs> okay. good timing, Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> See, she, she's learned a lot about marketing. Yeah. See, she, 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 she's no fool. Scott, tell me about, as, uh, as we kind of wrap up. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to sure. mention that because mm -hmm. we don't want to forget this. Okay. We wanted to thank the uh, our sponsors. Oh, sure. So uh, VitaWise Acupuncture is a, is a title sponsor. Uh, silver sponsors, including Advantage uh, Physical Therapy and Damrell Flooring. We have bronze sponsors, Alan Dickinson, Dorothy Herford, Marla Stone, and Spratz Market, and community partners as yep. well. Oh my God, uh, those. Sylvester Senior Center, uh, the PC Club, the Old Pros, and Family Search. Why that's important is because we can all help each other out. Uh, we'll, they are sponsoring us. We can help sponsor their events. And together, both clubs grow and get the benefit of all the people they can bring in. A rising tide lifts all boats, as exactly, they say. Exactly. Scott and Sunshine, thank you from the Publishing Club. I hope you get out to the event. I hope we, I hope we have great success, and thanks for being on the program. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Michael. And that's going to do it for this edition of this day. Let's take one quick look at the weather before we head out. It's going to be a very warm one. Really, that's all I have to say. It's going to be hot. <laughs> it's, going, it's going to be a warm weekend. Make sure you get into the air conditioning. Make sure that you uh, stay uh, safe out of the sun in the shade. Get some water. It's going to be nice and warm, and uh, you're going to want to avoid kind of going out for most of the weekend, I would think. Uh, it should be cooling down a little bit as we enter the rest of the week. Let's talk about the Friday movie. It is Begin Again. It is a great one uh, with Mark Ruffalo and Kira Knightley. It's brought to us by Pacific Financial Planners, and it's going to be uh, 2 p.m. with subtitles today and 6 p.m. without the subtitles, and it should be a great one. It's about these couple who comes to uh, New York with a big music contract. Things don't go well. Mark Ruffalo kind of comes in and saves the day and helps out Kira Knightley, so it should be a fun one. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of This Day. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at Village TV, we hope we make this day a great one. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. Remember me? I'm the king of Whoopi. <laughs> and you're watching Village Television. But everybody does. <laughs>